So today we're going to be putting a uh, receiver hitch on the back of my dump truck and I also wanted to take this opportunity to answer a question that people have asked me quite a few times over the years and that is, will you build me a hitch for my whatever? Will you make a video showing me how to make a hitch for my whatever? And uh, similar related questions and personally I don't actually build trailer hitches myself. There's, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a lot of liability that's involved with these. Uh, when I got commercial insurance, my insurance agent literally uh, specifically tried to exempt trailer hitches from my policy. And uh, the main reason why I don't build the things myself is because they are so ridiculously cheap just to go out and buy. Take this for example, this is a, I believe they call it a class 5 extra heavy duty or something along those lines. I bought this on Amazon, it was about 280 bucks delivered to my door. Uh, really, really cannot beat it. You know, if we look at the plate on the side of this thing, it's all quarter inch material with this huge, what looks like a four by four thing, a square tube. You know, I, uh, I usually try to build things pretty heavy. Honestly, if I was going to build a trailer hitch and my trailer hitch turned out like this and it's 280 bucks delivered to my door, I, uh, I, cannot, I cannot build it for that. This is probably, it's probably about 40 bucks worth of steel to be honest. However, you can't buy like three feet of that tube most places and like a foot tall of this and buy three feet long most places. You'd have to buy like $200 worth of steel and then you'd have to design the thing yourself and then you'd have to make it. And then you'd, you'd have to cross your fingers and hope and pray that nothing bad ever happens with it because if it does, then like I said, that's an obscene amount of liability. But the good folks at Kurt, who I'm not at all affiliated with, by the way, they, uh, they handle all that on their own end. They professionally engineer these things. And uh, it really seems like quite an awesome product that they put out. So that in a, in a nutshell is why I don't build trailer hitches. So the reason why I put this on here, there's actually several. I want to have this receiver hitch on here so that, uh, so that I can put a D-ring on the back of it that slides into the receiver tube that I made several years ago. So that way if the truck ever gets stuck, I can pull it out. Likewise, if something else gets stuck or needs to be yanked, I can pull it with, uh, with the dump truck here. And uh, that's the main reason. The other thing is, it's gonna be kind of nice to uh, actually have the ability to tow. Maybe small stuff, maybe someday I will. All right, so Mr. Dumpy's been parked over here for like several weeks now. Last time we used him was to uh, jumpstart the V8 tractor. That was an adventure all on its own. Oh, this might not have been a good idea. Seth, why did you let me use the largest vehicle on the entire property to fit all the way back in here where for some reason I parked the tractor? Oh, man. This is such a bad idea. But uh, anyway, he's over here, and while he was over here, I decided that I was going to deal with the uh, plethora of rotten floor mats and disgustingness. And so I ripped them out. There were three layers of floor mats. There was so much crap piled onto the floorboards, there's actually an entire chain sitting here underneath the floor mats, and I had absolutely no idea it was there. So I, I ripped all that stuff out of here, and then there was so much dirt. I exhumed enough dirt out of this thing to grow tomatoes in. It was absolutely disgusting. And uh, yeah, and then once that was done, where I was going with this, I took some rubberized truck bed coating and uh, painted the bottom of the cab. And yeah, so pretty happy with that. All right, so, oh, it's gonna be fun to get Mr. Dumpy out of here. And I bought him one of these dash mat things. I thought that was kind of cool. I still have to like anchor it down though. Try it without any choke. At least I think this is without any choke. I don't actually know which way the lever moves, <laughs> does which thing. Almost. All right, we're moving the choke lever the other way. Dumpy, cooperate. So one problem we had to address to install this trailer hitch is that someone had at some point welded on these gigantic hunks of scrap metal to the back of the frame. I, I don't know what for, but whatever the case, I just used the carbonate gouging process to rip them off in really short work.
So the good news is these things only appear to be about half inch bolts. So if we do have to actually drill holes in the frame without the mag drill, it shouldn't be that bad to do it. All right. Yeah, 1999 to current Ford F350, 450, 550, and 650. Plus, evidently, it fits the 80s trucks as well. Your mileage may vary, of course. All right, let's see what they are giving us here. Normally, I don't read manuals, but for anything like a hitch, you really can't cut corners on it. Everything has to be about perfect. Okay, I see. So these, okay, I got this now. All right, so this is really ingenious. This actually rests inside the frame. Like, if my hand's the frame, it rests like this so the bolt can't twist loose. That I really like, and then we just run it straight through. Yeah, look at that. They give you some grade eight, at least grade eight colored bolts, which is good. If I had to buy my own, I'd buy grade eights for this. Yeah, it takes a three quarter inch socket, drill, 19 30 seconds drill bit. Yeah, this really isn't a bad manual at all. I was expecting like, take to authorized service center and don't kill yourself in the process of installing it and sue us. But this is actually quite helpful. It looks like uh, there's two of these triangular gussets on each side. They line up just like such. And then uh, we drill one hole in the frame here and it holds this. It's basically just a little bit of extra strength for this setup. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of these grade eight, I guess they call these carriage bolts even. Absolutely beautiful hardware they give you with this. And we're gonna run them through these holes and uh, we're gonna bolt these on. Then we'll use this as a guide when we actually drill the hole for the other one. So because I don't want these things to come off ever, red Loctite city up in here. Lots of red Loctite. Nuts spin flawlessly onto this hardware. They really do give you good stuff with these hitches. And impact time. Let's see. I think we actually have to uh, removeify this vice grip. Will it stay up there? Yeah, it stays up there. We gotta removeify that so we can get to this. All right, sweet. Now, time to drill a hole for the third bolt. I guess I might as well put this back. Never be too safe. Okay, let's see, we'll put our hole right there. Oh, come on, center punch. Gotta get all my weight behind this. There. Hit it a couple times, we'll pilot drill it with a smaller bit. Yeah. All right, great, now we'll swap it out for a half inch bit. Now, since this is a two speed electric drill, I'll just put it in its lower speed range, shifts the gears on the inside, and yeah. All right, just lock tight up this bolt. Nuts on, now we tighten it down. So the hitch is now installed. We just went through, made sure all these bolts have plenty of red Loctite on them and they're torqued down really well. This thing fits the frame rails of this truck perfectly. I thought it was gonna be out of alignment by like an eighth of an inch or so, but when we got it better positioned, I saw that it's perfectly flush with the outside of each frame rail. No issues getting this installed. Could not be happier with it. I, uh, I gotta tell you guys, I really, really like this hitch. Uh, like I said, I'm not affiliated with Kurt, but and this is the first uh, Kurt hitch I've intentionally bought. I don't know what the ones on my other trucks are. They were on there when I got the trucks. But I'm uh, really pleased with this thing. This is the XD Plus, the Extra Duty Plus, made here in the US. Uh, really nice finish they put on these things. And uh, they look really well made. Everything on these is extremely heavy duty. This plate looks like it's thicker than quarter inch. I'm gonna say probably 5 sixteenths or so. And um, yeah, really, really like these things. The only way this could possibly be any better is if instead of these goofy things it had D-rings, but maybe I'll add those later or not worry about it. 
So yeah, it looks like a wonderfully put together product. You know, if I built a trailer hitch like this, I'd be extremely proud of it. And uh, for the price I paid for this thing, really, really pleased. So well done, Kurt, really impressed with them. And uh, now the dump truck has a hitch. Really the only downside of this installation is it makes the whole back of the truck look all uneven and like open and spacey because now there's a hitch hanging down where below where the truck used to visually kind of end on the bottom of it, if you will. But at some point what I'm gonna do is uh, make a real nice aluminum light bar that's gonna go in here because both of these lights need to be replaced. They're missing pieces. Like and I, I can actually stick my hand inside of this one and the back of that one somehow got cracked. I don't even have a theory how you manage to do that. So we're gonna replace these and put in some new ones of these and hopefully it'll look really cool and that should work to like tie everything together back here. So really, really impressed with the hitch. Glad it's on here. Well done, Kurt. And now I can use this truck to pull stuff. I can pull stuff out of the mud with it. I can move trailers around on my property if I have to. And it's everything I hope to be. Thanks for watching, you guys.